Laura, I mean, you're a reporter, of course, for Bloomberg Green, and uh, you've looked at how two different ships have, uh, well, set very different records this summer. What do these ships tell us about the current situation in the Arctic? That's right. So we have uh, told this story through two different ships. Uh, one of them is a, a gas tanker, a liquefied natural gas tanker called the Christophe de Marjorie. And this ship uh, set sail from northern Russia to China this year in mid-May. That was a record. It was the earliest any cargo ship had sailed this route from northern Russia to China through the north. Um, and for a part of that journey, it didn't even need an icebreaker because the ice was so thin, it could make the journey on its own. So this is obviously a sign of how uh, sea conditions are changing very rapidly in the Arctic, how the ice is melting. Um, the other uh, ship that we looked at is uh, the Polar Stern. That's the largest polar expedition in history. It's 100 uh, scientists on the Arctic for 12 months. Uh, in a way, looking to explain how this other ship, the gas tanker, was able to sail that route uh, so early in the year. They're looking at all sorts of uh, phenomenon uh, of how climate change is impacting the Arctic right now. Laura, you've done so much research about this. Could the ice in the Arctic completely disappear? And if that was to happen, what does that mean for shipments of raw materials? Uh, yes, so the Arctic could disappear during the summer. So uh, an ice-free Arctic during the summer months uh, is possible, and scientific models um, estimate it will happen. Uh, at, they differ on the times. Most of them estimate it will happen sometime in the middle of this century. Some of them say a bit later after uh, uh, the end of the century, some of them a bit earlier. But yes, uh, scientific models estimate that an ice free Arctic during the summer could happen. At this point in time, as you were saying before, uh, the ice in the Arctic uh, is 26 percent uh, smaller, the area that's frozen, than uh, the historic average. And we're on track for the lowest ice cover on, on record this year. Um, what this means for uh, oil, gas, and metal shipments from the Arctic to the rest of the world is that obviously new routes are opening up, uh, the shipping routes are shorter, about a third shorter, um, and potentially much cheaper for, for the companies shipping these, these materials to the rest of the world. I mean, we know that the melting of ice in the Arctic is affecting climate in the rest of the world. Uh, I mean, what does the data specifically point to here? What's the evidence? That's right. So for, for these companies that we were talking about before, it's, it, it's a short wing because obviously um, the melting of the Arctic is affecting climate in the rest of the world. Uh, so one scientist was telling me that the Arctic and the Antarctica, the two poles, are effectively the freezers of the world. Um, because their surface is white, they help reflect the sunlight um, of, of the, the sunlight out of to the atmosphere again. So they're eff effectively cooling the world. So as these uh, polar caps shrink, uh, this uh, white surface is shrinking as well and being replaced by ocean, which is dark and absorbs uh, the sunlight. So that effectively heats the world. Then at the same time, obviously, um, that generates atmospheric currents and, you know, that, that these can be traced to uh, weather events in places like New York, like Germany, in the rest of the world. Um, and obviously, as the ice melts, um, it becomes water. So sea level uh, in, in mm -hmm. the rest of the world is rising as well. Um, and that is forecast to cause uh, the displacement of hundreds and thousands of people across the world if it continues at the current pace.